Yeah, welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and uh, we're going to be looking at the uh, papers, as usual, on Off the Press this morning, and we're being joined by a very special guest of honor. Uh, well, if, it's, if I say that, it will sound like uh, we've never had him on the show, but he's a regular on the show, and you'll know why I'm saying this. Uh, we're being joined by architect Ezekiel Nyaito, public affairs analyst, joining us from Akwaibom State. Good morning and welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. <laughs> if I had the voice, I would have sung a song for you uh, for, your ha for your birthday. Yesterday was your birthday. You clocked 60, actual 60, uh, and you are a politician. It's just, uh, it's, it's, it's just out of place. <laughs> Nowadays, when you hear 60, uh, you'll be looking at uh, all the papers, the primary schools, the secondary schools, the, the first um, letter of appointment and all that to find out if that person is actually 60. But you are 60. Congratulations on that milestone, sir. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. God has been so merciful mm. and gracious to me. Mm. We're afraid you will have a hangover. You might not wake up to, <laughs> to do the program this morning. <laughs> but we thank God for mercy. For small mercy. Thank you. Congratulations, yes, sir. sir. Okay, so, so we're going to um, Daily Independence now. We're beginning with Daily Independence. And the leading story is, No excuses. Perform or I sack you, Tinubu tells ministers. Uh, so many people kind of liked that uh, uh, statement. W what is your take? Does it uh, portray the president as a strong-willed person that can do and undo uh, when uh, the need arises? I, I think it's um, a very important um, communication because Nigerians were sick and tired of the last administration where the man just hands you over the office, and that is it. Um, Tinubu is somebody that I can relate to very um, easily because he micromanages. And for a leader in a country like Nigeria, you must be hands-on. It's not enough. And again, against the backdrop of entitlement mentality, people believe that as you appoint them, you don't appoint them to do the work. You appoint them as a reward for the work they have done. And um, it, um, it's refreshing to hear the president say, you don't do the work, I fire you. And trust me, let me tell you, I, I have come to that point where I am um, starting to keep hope alive. I'm starting to see certain things that must be, and rather than wait to see if it will be, I am saying it must be. I'll tell you a very little thing. If your son, that you not had any children for seven years, and then eventually you have this child, and you get a call that is in a theater room, and you rush in there, you are not thinking, will this um, surgeon be able to do it? No. Your thought is, my son's got to leave. <laughs> the surgeon's got to do it. Mm -hmm. You are not hoping and waiting to see. You are hoping against hope because it's I'm in your larger interest yeah. for the, sur the surgeon to be successful. I'm sure you get where I'm heading to. Yeah. So Nigeria must be well. Our president will perform, and we, the citizens, will help him to perform because the issue of if or if not is over. He is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and that, that's finito. So he must perform, and we will make it possible for him to perform. That's why we are saying we agree with what he said, perform or quit. Mm, but um, why some people are just looking at it like... Um Will he? Can he? Is this fact that uh, in the previous administration we had one of the f most famous uh, quotes in our political history, I am for nobody, I am for everybody. So at the end of the tenure, the second tenure, uh, p there was a different interpretation to that because when he said it, everybody thought this is a tough man that has come and is going to uh, flush out all the bad eggs that we have in our society. But at the end of the day, it meant something else. Maybe he meant well, but he didn't have the will or uh, the power because uh, a lot of other people may have clipped 
his wings. Don't you think it's possible that this can happen here? Anyway, you're keeping hope okay. alive. Yeah, these are two different paradigms. One is, look, I'll be fair to all, okay? We understood it to mean that, okay? This one says, I must perform. They are two different things. Mm -hmm. For me, oh, I'll tell you this. There's a tendency of these, you know, um, ethnic biases, mm -hmm. you know, uh, clannishness, that tendency, because you see a lot of Yorubas coming to the party. Honestly and sincerely, I'll say this as a senior citizen, officially, okay? <laughs> and that I couldn't care less if Tinubu's junior brother is a minister of finance and the daughter is a minister of works. I couldn't care less. If by a Pointing them, these people come and fix our problems. Because I don't I don't care. Look, when Jonathan, former president Jonathan, was the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I can't really say that the South South was better off. I tend to have impression that when President um uh, the one that succeeded him, uh, immediate past president, Buhari. how can I a Buhari? I think that President Buhari, my personal opinion, did more for the Niger Delta than President Jonathan did for the Niger, Niger Delta. Okay? Uh, 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 and, and it's understandable. So for me, is please, if you want to pack all the Yoruba people, no problem, but just make sure that there are people that will perform. Now, there's this argument, oh, you can find people that per can perform from any part of the globe or any part of the country. True it is. And there is a constitutional provision for fairness and equity in the distribution of not just resources, but offices in the land. But I think that, you know, beyond the legalities, I would rather have a Yoruba man that can perform well than an a quite man that feels a sense of entitlement and gets to the office and for four years, I only have my brother that is there and not a country that is better. Better yeah. still, let him now look for an acquired man that can perform. So between the three choices, the best choice is spread it and get the best hands to do it. The second um, best choice is get the people from wherever and let them perform. The worst is you bring in your clansmen and they do nothing, like in the past administration. Mm. So it's a um, gradation of those three. You know, the worst, the good, or the uh, manageable, and then the best. <laughs> good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, we remember. Okay, uh, well, uh, going to the south-south now, River State is a, a state of concern right now when the governor and the erstwhile governor are fighting. Now, it was speculation that um, it might be that the minister of the federal capital might have a hand in what is happening in River State. And events uh, in the past few hours have just confirmed that he has a hand in what is happening. In fact, he even did say that um, impeachment is not a, a coup. It is constitutionally provided for in the Constitution. So uh, whatever is going on in River State, if they remove the governor, it's not a bad thing. It's not a coup, so long as it's the civilians that are doing it and it is in the Constitution. So this headline carries, I have capacity to fight back. Wiki wants detractors. Maybe this one, this particular statement is for detractors as he is performing in the um, uh, federal capital territory. But we do also know that he has said nobody can intimidate him and that the political structures in River State must remain the way they are, uh, which means that the political structures that are loyal to him must remain the way they are. And he can dictate to anybody at any time as far as it's River State. What are your comments on what is happening generally in River State uh, between the governor and the FCT minister? You know, Nigerians have um, a memory that's sometimes treacherous. We forget uh, probably a little too soon. 
And we also do play a lot of the ostrich. Mm. You bury your head in the sand and you think that you are buried, your whole body is exposed. And we also have an entitlement mentality where you want to have your cake and eat it. These are the different aspects of Nigeria politics that we have become victims of, where there's a problem with the leadership and the origin of the problem of the leadership is the followership. I always talk about office of the citizen of the fair. The day, you see, there's a statement that we make and we've glorified that statement and I'm starting to think that it's a false narrative. The problem of Nigeria rises and falls on leadership. That's not true. That's not true. The problem of Nigeria, because we run a constitutional democracy, rises and falls on the people that choose the leaders. You can't be a governor until you have been chosen. You see a goat. You carry yam and give the goat to keep. The goat eats the yam. You turn around and cry foul. The problem is it with the goat that did what it naturally would do, or with you that was so, pardon me, stupid to give yam to goat to keep. Let me tell you, until we come and take responsibility for our leadership recruitment, we'll just be going round in circles. If it was like a theocracy where you have no or a monarchy where you don't have a choice. I can understand with that, that prop, that issue reigns. But in a constitutional democracy, where the power of choice is vested in the people, and we abdicate our responsibility, and would rather collect money on election day and hand over our sovereignty and our mandate to one man called Mr. President or one man called the governor, whom we know who he is or she is, but we play the ostrich and pretend not to know. And then the man comes to office and he's himself. And then you now say, oh, our problem is leader. No, our problem is not our leader. Our problem is you and I that chose those people until we come to that reality we will never make progress as a country and we will because citizens like us are starting to put a search light on the office of the citizen either of the federal republic of nigeria of Ibom state or of your state to say we've got to wake up now going to river state i'll tell you this I, I, if i were the governor i will understand the seasons the times the memory of Nigeria is short. It's short. There's nothing called political structure. Two months to election, three months to election, six months to election, you can move everything called structure. All you need is, number one, to be wise. You know where you are going. You know where you are going. You know where you are going. As a governor of River State, you are making the biggest mistake by starting a fight too early. And let me tell you that the FCT is another state and the budget is humongous. And not only that, Wike has good control of the power of state and he has good resources at his disposal. He has capacity to take care of his boys. But if you were smart, you would play along. Let the first year pass. Buy some level of emotional you know, intelligence. Do you understand me? Let people start to feel some level of sorry for you. Uh -uh, but why is Wicked doing this now? Uh, but why is Wicked? For now, unknown to him, people are saying, why is he biting the fingers that fed him? So he's not been able to establish that issue of buying the sympathy of the people.
He's but, not. But, but, sir, one, one year is quite some time because if the rumors are right, even though the FCT minister has denied these rumors, uh, that he wanted a percentage of, uh, of the state's income uh, to come to him monthly, he wanted to take an aspect of governance uh, and leave one of the aspects of governance to the governor himself. You know, so he will still be in let, almost absolute control let of the me, state. Let me tell so you, what let if me this is true? And one year, this money goes to a, an individual. It, it will become more and more powerful. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. There's something called strategy. There is something called strategy. And unfortunately, with all due respect, most governors don't understand the meaning of that word strategy. One man that understood this so well was IBB. And unfortunately, a lot of our young people were not privy and we don't have history. You know, IBB will set you up. It's like, you know, OJ Simpson, you know, uh, trial. Mm. Everybody concluded that this guy did this, but somehow they could not link him to it. You understand me? Government, there is opposition. Do you get the point? If I were to have advised him, I'll tell him, you know what, this open confrontation is still too early and still too fresh. Number one. Number two, no, you're not going to accept this. You're not going to accept this. Number three is that there are many ways to kill a rat. Get some information across to opposition. Do you understand me? Hmm. You can do things and nobody traces anything to you. Do you understand me? Somehow they can know that it'd be like, say, this man, but you just sit there pretty. No, gentlemen, let's be careful. No, no, no. And then when this thing is festering, you go to your boss. Do you understand me? Oga, okay. this thing is getting out of hand. I'm here to protect your interest. There's no way. This is government. You know. This is what I'm starting. Let's, 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 let's. Do you understand me? Wisdom. You start to gradually, while you're putting fuel somewhere, you are playing the rat. You are biting and you are blowing. You know, you have to be smart. Yeah, the Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct. This open confrontation might consume the governor unless he starts to have very, very serious strategic thinkers around him who knows how to get what he wants. And yet, you know, diplomacy, they say, is telling somebody to go to hell and he actually looks forward to it. There are many, but, but we don't have thinking governors. We don't have strategic governors. We just have this, you know, brute force, you know, political. No, that you don't agree. You have to show that you are the governor. You have to blah, blah, blah. No, it's not like that. You are the governor. You are the governor. You are in control of the resources of the state. And there's a way you can do it so that no man can pack more money than is you know, some level of appreciation for him, but you can't come and run my system. No, you won't. I would, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would. <laughs> Devil and the deep blue sea, that's Give what we're governor. saying. Let, let River State Governor come to me free of charge. <laughs> I'll tell him how I've, to balance I've, equations. I've, I've heard the kind of wisdom you're going to give to him. He better consult <laughs> you now. Okay, um, let's move to another interesting, um, interesting uh, headline. Interesting, especially because it's what you're passionate about, labor. Yesterday there was a protest in uh, Imo State, and we found out that uh, the, um, the president of NLC was arrested. Uh, in fact, the words that NLC is using is abducted. And then that he was assaulted, even though the, the police say that he was taken into protective custody. It was for his own protection that they took him. But we've seen him with swollen face, and uh, we, are, we, we tend to agree with the fact that he was assaulted. Maybe not by the police, we don't know that, but the old fingers are pointing to the police. But now, the thing is, before the protest, uh, the governor sought and had an injunction that this protest cannot hold. And 
the NLC still went ahead and did the protest. And whatever happened, happened. Now, accusing fingers are pointed at the governor of the state. The headline reads, Labor accuses Uzodima of abducting, brutalizing NLC president. Your comment on uh, the general uh, behavior or the general happenings in Imo State yesterday. You know, I, I, I happen to be an in-law of Imo State and... Um, I don't know, a lot of times I feel really bad about that state because Imo State has extremely resourceful set of people. It has certain strategic advantages in location. It has a lot of things going. And I don't think that Imo State has developed the way it should. Uh, we have governors that seem to be more interested in politics than in governance. And in that process, they seem to apply a lot of underhand tactics and things that do not all go well for the welfare of the economy of that state. You see, this issue of um, relating with workers, it's one that you must understand that the Bible says a workman is worthy of his pay and do not tie the mouth of the horse that, that, that treads the corn, you know? We, we see a lot of politics and so little governance, and the welfare of the workers is not prioritized. As a result, the people are unhappy. And then you now use might, now use court, now use extra judicial processes where, where necessary to, to, to muscle the people. Ajero is a very good friend of mine, and um, uh, one that we have many things in common principally the welfare of the workers. And um, I think that I think that what has happened is not acceptable. You want to do a protest, on one hand you say the court has said no, but then if even if the court says no, you are going to now bring thugs to infiltrate. How can you rescue a man who wants to work for the workers? Who are the counter protesters? Are they the people that say, no, we don't want better welfare? Is that possible? Hmm. It begs the question and goes without saying that it must have been organized people brought in to cause problems. And then you now come to rescue Ajay Hero from, from the secretariat, the not even on, on the street. Hmm. Sorry? He was, he was taken into protest. Protective custody that's from the from the secretariat, not while they are on the field. That's the story. That's what I'm, mm. that's what I'm saying. Who are they protecting him from? Are they protecting him from the workers that he's going to talk for, or they are protecting him from the mob that they have stationed to disrupt what could? Order? I mean, where have you seen workers protest? Workers and it turns violent no yeah i've not seen one in nigeria what usually happens is that when people carry out their legitimate protests there will be organized counter protests by those we know better and as a result there's uh, the fracker you know but i, I think that um emo state needs to be a little more diplomatic in the way they handle the affairs and a lot more transparent and I also think workers need to, you know the resources. When I was campaigning, the engagement I had with NLC was so robust and was so honest that they themselves, I told them, you are the problem. You are the frog that sets the rain that beats you. You know, it's a local, you know, um, idiom. You know, why? There is nothing in government that can be done without the civil servants. Nothing. You know everything. The governor cannot lift a finger without the civil servant. No commissioner, no head of parastatal can do anything without the civil servant. So two things. When you help the government to siphon the money and nothing is left and you turn around and cry wolf, then I'm just wondering if you are thinking like I'm thinking or there's something wrong with my own thinking. 
Okay, well, that's, let's move to the Guardian newspaper, even if there are so many other uh, things to, that we could have discussed in uh, the previous paper, the Daily Independent. But a red flag as domestic borrowing, uh, on domestic borrowing as Tinubu considers 30 trillion naira fresh loans. Um, what do you think? It is almost every week now we hear a loan here, loan there, loan for palliatives, loan for cars, loan for one thing or the other. Now he's thinking about 30 trillion naira fresh loans. And the government said that there would be no borrowing whatsoever. I'm wondering what you think about it. See, you see, you see, you see my brother, you see, the bitter truth is that we need to go back to our leadership recruitment. There's something, a position paper I'm setting out for INEC because these are the things that made me go as far as to the Supreme Court. I gathered this level of experience and I was driven not that this you know, inordinate ambition to rule, but by the strong desire to interrogate our electoral process and ultimately make it better. We can't continue these things that we are doing. You want to be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and you have no understanding of the fundamentals. You make statements to play to the gallery and make the people happy and you do not realize that those statements are not, are not factual, they are not possible, they are not implementable, they are not thought through. You know, you just want to say things that the people, and then we are gullible enough that when they say those things, oh, we clap, 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 clap. When are we going to sit down and say, sir, with all due respect, what's the current situation? And why do you say this is not going to happen? Mm. What you have in mind to do? So there is this robust engagement and interrogation to ensure that by the time you get into the office, there's the percentage of what you are not aware of is not more than 20, 30. Mm -hmm. As I sit here, I could tell you about the government of Akwa Ibom State, nothing less than 70%. Because I studied, I read, I investigated. I could tell you the things I will not be able to do as governor because the resources are not there. I could tell you the things I could do because I took time. You know, there was something that Mr. Donald Duke told me. I don't know whether jokingly or seriously. He said, yeah, because he doesn't like to call me Nya. He just calls me Nya, you know. You know, you know, in Cross River, you have Nya as a name. Mm -hmm. Even the to part is more of a quiet mm -hmm. and we were together before. Anyway, he said, Nya. You have so much money in a quiet bomb state, you don't need to think. I have no money in Cross River, so all I do is think. At first, I laughed at it. Ha, 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 ha. But at the end of the day, I discovered that that was the most indicting statement anybody could make. No matter how much money you have, you cannot but be a thinking governor. You must be a thinking governor. But how many governors do we have that are thinking governors? And because he was thinking with the meager resources he had, today he remains, to the best of my knowledge, the only governor that has branded a state. And that brand has remained, notwithstanding efforts by past people to probably make nonsense of it and everything. But everybody continues to say, oh, Cross River is tourism, Calabar Carnival, and it's still lasting. Why am I saying this? We need to say, know that there's nothing wrong in borrowing. Absolutely nothing wrong in borrowing. But I get concerned. It's just simple fundamentals. It's A, B, C. That you don't, you borrow to return. You borrow to return. The circle must close. You Unless you have that at the back of your mind. But you see, politicians are like, yeah, yeah, it will close maybe after I've left office. But that's wrong. Because you're thinking your administration. You're thinking yourself. You're thinking your name. 
you it's like the government you are not giving nigeria to be about you no are you giving a quiet bomb state to be about the governor no it's about the people about generations unborn it's about thinking about the next generation as a leader mm. if you cannot consider the next generation you do not have right to have that tag of a leader mm. you must think generational and not administration these mm. are the issues and the matters that bother me about government. There's nothing wrong with borrowing there. Please, you cannot borrow for consumption. It's, it's one, two, three simple fundamentals. Show me how the circle closes. Let me tell you, there are a lot of things about our country that people have not exposed, you know, are not exposed to. Where are we getting a lot of our resources from? Everybody knows oil. Question number one. What is our production quota? Why is it so? Question number two. Have we mortgaged our future in any way? That shouldn't be a private conversation. That shouldn't be a secret of a clique. That should be a national discourse. Mm. Because there's a lot of insinuations. Okay. We have like, you know, forward borrowing against productions. To the, so that even if we double our production now, because of the understandings that we have of taking in advance and you know collateralizing it as it were with the crude there's so much opacity within our system so for me i don't have anything against borrowing he can borrow 50 trillion which he actually needs to borrow mm. but can we have this class of thinkers that sit down and, and say we must be disciplined the president is thinking of buying a yacht for himself. Of people are thinking in terms of buying Prados for National Assembly. People are just not. Let me let me end on this because yeah. time is probably not on side. Yes. But it's important I make this statement. Wrap up. If I agree. Mm. Good. Yes, just wrap up. Yeah. Yeah. Number one is that our Naira is having problem. Why is the Naira having problem? Because the supply of the dollar is short. Now, what do you do? I'll tell you one, two, three things. Number one, we celebrated our, you know, the, the Dubai route being open to us. Are we thinking Dubai route does two things to Nigeria? One, my 60th birthday would probably have been celebrated in Dubai. That was the destination of celebration for Nigerians. And you know what that means. A hundred people are coming over to Dubai to celebrate with me. Each of them will not need to spend less than $20,000. Multiply with that. What do we gain at the end of the day? Nothing. That is number one. Leisure, luxury, enjoyment. Number two is buying. Buy, 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 buy. Hmm. Are these two things that we need in Nigeria today? Let's wrap up, the please. The president mm. should strategically ban Dubai. Mm. Number two, why do we want to buy Prados instead of Innocent? Does it make sense? Number three, they've released a list of 43 items that you can now bid for foreign exchange. Are we, you know, we need to forget imf and okay. sit down and think from first principles to solve our problems all right um we need uh, the, the clincher here is that we need governors who are thinkers we need uh, um uh not only governors we need uh, leaders who are thinkers no matter how much money we have we should never be the dodgy thing that we have a lot of money our problem is how to spend it well this is how we'll wrap it up uh, because of time uh, architect ezekiel nyaitop thank you for your time and once again happy senior birthday, citizen of the happy birthday of senior America. citizen happy <laughs> birthday. of the federal republic of yes America. thank you so much for your time this morning thank you thank yeah. you We've been talking with architect Ezekiel Nyaitok, a public affairs analyst who eventually turned 60 yesterday, and we congratulate him for that and pray that God keeps him uh, alive for longer and strengthens him to do the job he's been doing, especially in, as regards the citizen 
of the Office of the Citizen of Nigeria. We'll take a short break now, and we will be joined by an L NLC chieftain that will be telling us uh, firsthand what happened in Imo State yesterday. Stay with us.